thanks very much, Jonathan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, honored guests, friends, colleagues, uh, members of the community. It's great, great to have so many people here today. Um, so uh, I'd just like to, there's been a number of references to some of the background that goes into um, these plaques, and so I'll just share with you a few of the stories that uh, are of interest. And, uh, but before I start, I'm just wondering if anybody noticed when Bernie was speaking, uh, and speaking about the feeding boxes and the chickadees, some chickadees materialized, and they may have been traveling with some friends, they uh, often do, but uh, I thought that was very fitting. So, um, the, uh, the study of and collection of insects was a very important pastime in Victorian times. And in keeping with that trend, in uh, July of 1864, William Saunders got together with a few of his friends and organized the London branch of the Entomological Society of Canada. From this humble beginning, the group known today as Nature London got its start. So let's put this into context. The year was 1864. London was a small city of about 12,000 souls in Canada West. Later that year, the leaders from uh, several colonies would get together in Charlottetown and in Quebec to talk about the idea of confederation. William Saunders was 28 years old, a young businessman in London, a druggist, and he was very busy running his drugstore and seeing to the needs of his young family. But at the same time, he had a great passion for nature, for science, and for knowledge. He had already published papers on plants, amphibians, and insects, but at this time, in 1864, the, the priority was insects. By the early 1870s, the energetic work of Saunders and his colleagues here in London prompted the Ontario Entomological Society to move its headquarters and its insect collections and the publication of its journal from Toronto to London. For several decades, London functioned as the Entomological Capital of Canada. In 1890, the Entomological Society expanded its horizons to include other branches of natural history, sections devoted to the study of birds, plants, rocks, microscopic life were organized. Meetings, field trips, and collecting expeditions took place. And the very first field trip of the botanical section was held here in Springbank Park. William E. Saunders, son of William Saunders, was the founding president of the Bird Study Group, which was officially named the Ornithological Section. And he was to remain its driving force until his death in 1943. In 1902, the Ornithological Section was renamed McElwraith Ornithological Club. This name was in honor of Thomas McElrath, who was actually a resident of Hamilton, but he was the, the foremost ornithologist in Ontario at the time. In 1906, the Ontario Entomological Society packed up, moved its headquarters to Guelph, taking with it the, its vast collection of insects and its very substantial library. Although there were no formal meetings of naturalists in London for a number of years, the various London members of the former sections continued to pursue field work and offer some study sessions in the community. In particular, members of the ornithological section continued to go on field trips and maintain bird records. In 1915, the ornithological group reorganized as an independent entity under the name McElwraith Ornithological Club. With a few name changes along the way, the club has continued meeting without interruption since that time. One of the early activities of the club was an effort to stop the, the very common pastime of shooting birds in Springbank Park. 
representations to the Public Utilities Commission of the day were successful. And a 1916 letter from the Commission promised that migrating birds would be protected. Thus, London became a leader in protection of birds. Federal legislation protecting birds was passed a year later. Through the years, the programs for indoor meetings have reflected the technology available at the time. Early meetings focused on birds and relied on the use of what were called study skins. In the days before illustrated field guides, it was common for early naturalists to shoot birds and hold a collection of these specimens for scientific purposes. Later, there was a transition to photographic slides, movies, sound recordings, and more recently, of course, digital images. Over time, there was a gradually increasing interest in species other than birds and in conservation issues. Field trips were and continue to be held on a regular basis. A quarterly publication, The Cardinal, first appeared in 1951. Although the group had been active in conservation issues in earlier times, its first formal conservation committee was established in 1966 and continues today under the name Conservation Action Committee. A major focus of that committee is the protection of important natural areas in the city. In the 1960s and 70s, club members witnessed the loss of natural habitat through urbanization. Noting threats to other areas, the club urged elected officials to set aside some places for nature. Westminster Ponds and Warbler Woods are but two examples of locations where the club advocated for protection. In some cases, club members carried out studies to demonstrate the value of London's natural areas. In others, the club raised money and hired professional biologists to do the investigations. Through the 1980s, pioneering work by the Conservation Committee resulted in the designation of natural areas in the city's official plan. Later, this designation was revised to environmentally significant areas that the description in use today. In 2017, Nature London's Conservation Action Committee remains an important advocate for the ecological integrity of these areas. On other fronts, the group established a nature reserve, Cedarcroft, near Delaware in 1983. By 1988, the McElreath Club decided once again to organize a subsection for those interested in birds, and the birding wing began. Work starting in the late 1990s by members of the McElreath Group was instrumental in establishing the Thames Talbot Land Trust, an organization that protects ecologically important lands in the London region through long-term ownership. The trust established itself as an independent organization in 2000, but maintains close ties to Nature London. Educational outreach remains important for Nature London today. Nature in the City, a winter series of talks, has been offered in partnership with the London Public Library since 2006. The Christmas Bird Count for Kids was first held in 2014. Generations of Londoners have come to know, enjoy, and value nature and natural areas through the efforts of Nature London and its members. Today, in the 21st century, Nature London continues its activities in citizen science, educational outreach, and conservation. The tools available to us to study nature, record observations, educate the public, and to advocate for protection may have changed, but the strong commitment remains. There's much work to be done, to be done and I'm confident that Nature London will continue its work for future generations of Londoners.